been over winter break when I could check your notes and everything else, but you know, that didn't work out very well. So now is like our reset between semester one and semester two, which means the middle of the year, right? Semi means to cut something in half. So the next notes check, I only want new notes. So the notes you start taking today up until February 11th are the notes that I want to check. So the first thing you want to put on your notes for today, like brand new sheet of paper, guys, this is your chance to reset. If you don't have a dedicated math notebook, you need to figure that out and I can help you if you need to. If you're using like loose leaf graph paper and you need a binder to put them in, I can help you out with that. Like. I've got things I can loan you, but if you did not, yeah, like Carice is showing right now, if you did not get your math notebook back from up here yet, please do that. So, on the mastery, I want you to look at your mastery, look at what you missed, and then look up here at what I have typed up with the trap door. We're gonna talk about this together in just a second, but I'm gonna give you like a minute to look at it on your own. All right, I'm gonna go problem by problem, so stick with me, I'm gonna move fast. <laughs> one and two, most of us got those. Number one was a proportional relationship. Number two is not a proportional relationship because the cost per roll changes. However, number three got almost all of us. And what you did wrong for almost all of us was the order of your division. It is not a dollar twenty per roll. If you get one point two, that answer is rolls per dollar, which is not what I asked you for. So in a lot of papers, I highlighted dollars per roll or price per roll tells us to divide the dollar amount divided by the amount of rolls. A lot of us just did that backwards. Not a big deal. On your progressing to mastery on Schoology, because if you are progressing, that is what you are going to go do. On your progressing to mastery on Schoology, which if you want to see how to get there, quarter three folder, right, we're back in hybrid. Progressing to mastery, I can't show you that because you'll see people's grades. There are at least two questions that I'm giving you the answers to right now. In this moment, I'm giving you the answers because in there I ask you about from the original mastery, most of us got this wrong, why? Explain. And you need to type a response to me. So please pay attention right now. Don't sit there like a bump on a log. I don't wanna see your paper again, unless you never turned it in. And then I need to see it. Like if you have a grade, that's yours to keep. But you have to do the progressing the mastery if you are progressing. So please pay attention right now. Ask me questions if things don't make sense. But that's what we did wrong on number three. It was the order of our division. Number four, most of us got that one with $70 per hour, because if you divide the dollars by hours, that seemed easier than number three for some reason. And then three more hours was another $210 for a total of 560. Number five got almost every single one of us. If you got number five right, which is still on the front, if you got number five right, give yourself like a pat on the back. The tricky part there, is although it changes by $10 per friend, what does your price start at? Yeah, a hundred. What does your price need to start at to be proportional? Zero. To be proportional, things have to start with nothing. Our starting price for the party is a hundred, even before anybody shows up then we have to pay extra per person. That's on the progressing to mastery. You have to explain why this is not proportional. And the issue is, the issue is, sorry, my mask blurs my words, is that we start with an initial fee, right? That's the problem. They charge us right up front. 
We don't just pay per person. If we went to the movies, we talked about this in class, we go to the movies and each of us just buys a movie ticket. That's proportional. Because if none of us go, it doesn't cost us anything. But if no one shows up to my skate party, I'm out $100. Which makes me sad. I want to skate with my friends. Number six, good work. We pretty much all got that one right, dividing the miles by the hours. So we do the number of miles divided by the number of hours. Number seven was really interesting. Almost everybody got the first one. The middle one was really like 50-50. And the third one, almost all of us missed, but we almost all did the same thing. For the first one, it's y equals 4.5x. You look at how does two go to nine, and like you can see the 4.5 really easy. B was not proportional because if you check it, the multiplication changes. So for B, you should have just written not proportional. And for C, guys, who answered 1.5? No shame. If you answered 1.5, you're like everybody else. That is X over Y. We need Y on top of X. It should be 2 over 3. If you gave me 0.66, I let it slide. But 2 thirds is better than 0.66. The fraction is better. So if you need to make yourself a, a note, a reminder that constant of proportionality is always Y over X, make that reminder to yourself. Like write it down somewhere or whatever, but we have to do the division y over x. Eight, most of us got, if we divide the 17 by two, we get 8.5. And nine, the graph is proportional because it is a straight line starting at the origin. So like the last time, because I can't figure out how to do Schoology any better, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. That assignment is right here. If you already have a mastery and you want this assignment to go away, like off your to-do list, just open it and submit it. By you submitting blank answers, I'm like, oh yeah, they must already be mastered. Now you can do it if you want to, like you can answer these questions, but if you already have a mastery on math, you don't have to. But if you wanna make it go away, submit it. Then it will disappear from your to-do list, like in Schoology, you know that bar on the right-hand side. Um, this has nothing in it yet, but, uh, we do have some more Khan Academy encouragement videos, which I am going to be, um, putting into that folder. So anyone ever watch, I don't know, this little thing called, uh, the NBA. Yeah. Some professional basketball. Net never heard of the NBA before. The biggest, most important thing he said, I think, is bring the effort. Okay, so some of us are having issues with bringing the effort. So we're going to talk about what your notes should look like moving forward. So everybody in your notes, the first thing we're going to write down is that our next notes check for us is February 11. Because you're green. The next notes check for green is February 11th. It will only be new notes. So there's a part of me that might just start this Monday because that's February and it would make life super easy if we just say we're just collecting notes for February on forward. But that doesn't mean slack off today. I may want today's notes also, because today is our last day together in January. Do you guys realize that? Tomorrow, January is over. Well, for school, right? Because Monday is February 1st. So, you know, there's like a missing weekend in there. Who what? Yeah. Well, yeah, you guys do, right? Are you doubled up this week or is blue next tomorrow? 
Do you guys have school tomorrow or not? Now I gotta double check. You're sure? Fine, you're right. You guys are right. Which means that you're gonna be ahead. Right now, blue is ahead of you, but when we have class tomorrow, you'll be ahead. Um, I am going to extend some due dates, guys. So if I haven't done that by tomorrow when you come to me, somebody should remind me. I am going to extend some due dates. That rubric that I gave you with your notebook. Oh, wait, some of you are like, rubric, what? If you didn't turn in your math notebook, you don't have one of these. Raise your hand and I will bring you one. If you have it, get it out. It should be shoved in your math notebook right at the end of where you turned it in. Hey man, bring the effort. All right, so here's the deal. Some of us are wasting our time, and me as a mathematician, I cannot stand wasted time. If you are going to come to class and take notes, but your notes have like random words written here and there, and like half of a math problem, and you never actually write down the solutions, and you don't ever actually finish a problem, like that's a waste of time. So tell them. And that was a problem in remote is like nobody would speak up because we were all on Zoom and it would take, oh no, you had to reach up and hit your space bar to unmute the mic. So it's time to get rid of those excuses from remote learning and move forward the way that we should. So if you look at this rubric, there are four boxes and then guys, this means all together. Cumulative is a fancy name for all together. So I need you to either like write down what I've written down or something that will help you know what like what I have written down. This says date. Sorry, it's the only word kind of bleeding off the page. To get a check, this will be the rubric that I use to grade your, your notes next time. Excuse me. To get a check for this section for dates and headers, what am I looking for? You should write this down right now that every class period has a header and date. Yes. Huh? To know when you did things. It's just a good life skill to get into. Especially, let's say, like, you were working on loose leaf graph paper and you run into somebody in the hallway and drop your notebook and it bursts open so you can put things in order. Like, literally, the reason we put dates on things is just so we know what order we did them in. You, you could make an argument that it doesn't matter and you could, like, literally put, like, A on page one and B on page two, or you could do page numbers. You could do anything to organize yourself, but dates is a nice, easy way to organize. And if you miss a class, everything on my YouTube channel is, like, by date. So I want you to know, like, what date you missed, what date you're looking for. That's why we use dates. Huh? Yeah, that happens. They That keeps happening. Number two. See what I did with the word obvious there? It's really obvious, right? It sticks out. That's what your vocab should look like. Vocab should be underlined or highlighted or have a star next to it or all of those things. Number three, th this was driving me crazy with some of you. You would write down the beginning of the problem and then that was it. You don't have the solution in your notes, which means your notes are pointless. Guys, I'm just being honest because I care about you and I want you to hear the truth. If you come to class and only do half of what we do, it was a giant waste of time. For you, I assume it is not a waste of time for me because I assume that at least one person Maybe does what I'm ha hoping for. But if you make the choice, I mean, guys, it's like going to the movies and like shutting your eyes and plugging your ears. Like, why go to the movies if you're not going to actually watch and listen to the movie? 
why come to math class if you're not going to actually engage in solving the math problems? You can't just sit here and like, you can't baby bird this. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but baby birds to eat just open their mouth. Mama bird has already ate the food, swallowed it, and pukes it back up into their mouth. It's real gross. You cannot baby bird mathematics. You gotta chew your own food. You even gotta cut your own food. You cannot baby bird math. And number four, this is really because a couple notebooks that I saw were a train wreck. What do I mean by a train wreck? Have I ever said get out ruled paper? No, I always say get out graph paper. So if you are using lined paper, you're just blatantly like ignoring the like number one thing I say is that when we do graph or when we do math, we should do it on graph paper. I literally have graph paper taller than you are if we stacked up all of my stacks of graph paper. Use my paper. I do not care how much you use, use my graph paper. You have no excuse. I literally walked around with a stack like this big for the math test yesterday and was like, here you go, here you go. Like each classroom needed graph paper and I was just like, graph paper for everyone. Um, so that's a minimum. If your notes start in the middle of a page and the whole like top half of your page is like a picture of a donkey, like what? If your notes are written sideways, like a third grader, that's a train wreck, right? So what do I mean by not a train wreck? I mean, it should look like a seventh grader's notebook. I'm not expecting perfectly straight lines and perfect squares and perfect circles. No, of course not. But do I expect that you write from left to right, top to bottom? Yeah. Do I expect that we try to spell words right? Yes. Should our writing be large enough and legible so we can go back and read it? Yes. Guys, it's embarrassing. If I called, and when I talk about you, I mean all of you, right? All the seventh graders, all the people I teach. If I called some of you over and said, like, read this to me, you wouldn't be able to read your own handwriting. I'm not joking. Looking through your notebooks, it was like, oh, they didn't care to come back and read this. We take notes so we can come back and use them again, right? We don't just take notes to then like throw them in the back seat of the car and never see it again. That would be dumb. Any questions on what I'm expecting out of your notes? And I will tell you this morning, somebody was obviously not take like what we're about to do, the math notes that we're about to take. And after class, they had to come show me their notes and now they need to come meet with me at extensions. Because on the day that we talked about what is expected out of your notes, they didn't take notes this morning. Curious why that choice is being made, and I feel like there's more going on in that situation. But like this is why we're talking about what is expected out of you. I felt like it wasn't quite fair for me to give anyone like a check minus or anything like that on your notebook because I hadn't given you a rubric yet. But now that I've given you a rubric, you know what to expect. Now, do you have to have checks on every single one of these to get a check on the final? No. You could have a check minus on a couple of these and be a little rocky on a couple, but I'm gonna tell you like, hey, this is where you need to grow. This is what you need to work on, right? So I would be honest with you and tell you when, when something isn't great. Four hour math notes today. If I was you, I would start a new piece of paper because this is pretty much a perfect like one sheet of paper notes day. But it's up to you. If you just want to draw a squiggly line and then like put today's notes under what we just wrote, that's fine. But I started a new page. And your header, here's the debate I was in. This was the first header that I did, but then we just immediately defined the words. So instead of doing that, I feel like it makes more sense to make our header the definitions of these words. So let's now, because I know it's hard for some of you to see, is this easier or if I go here, is that easier to see? Okay. The other thing I forgot to say, and this is what the slide just reminded me of, my notes go here. So like today, when I'm done with you guys, I'm done teaching this, this lesson. My notes will go into this notebook. If you ever need to see my notes, like that student who this morning wasn't taking their notes, they will get the invitation to copy down my notes in the class. Now I might give them a second chance and say, I will go make a copy of my notes for you today. I expect you to do better in the future. And that's okay. Like I, I'm not a meanie. Well, I'm not always a meanie. But like I, you can't just like never take notes and always come copy mine. Like literally like Xerox machine. Because that won't help you learn. 
writing helps us learn. More paper? Yeah. yeah. Guys, I've been trying to put out the good paper for you guys, like the five-star reinforced, like nice. It's like the it's like the Dixon Ticonderoga pencils. Well, look, dude, I'm not joking. I haven't put these out because these are actually like kind of expensive. But when if somebody comes to me and says I need a pencil and I'll actually take care of it and keep track of it, like I'll give away the nice stuff. But these are like art pencils. But if you use this for 10 minutes and then lose it and it becomes trash, that's a waste of money. I also have mechanical pencils too. So an expression just expresses something. You owe me $5. I paid $3 per sandwich and bought a drink for $2. Like the expression just says what something is. The equation says that two expressions are equal to each other. I paid $3 per sandwich and $2 for a drink and my total was $11. Right? An equation sets two expressions equal. And the inequality says something is bigger or something is smaller. So I paid $3 per sandwich, $2 for a drink, and I spent less than $10. Right? Like, not equal, less than. So three different ways we can talk about stuff. Right, an expression, I spent $5. An equation, I spent $3 per sandwich, $2 for a drink, and spent a total of, when you relate it to a total, and an inequality, something is bigger or something is smaller. And, well, if something is bigger, then something has to be smaller, the other thing. If something is smaller, then something has to be bigger, the other thing. If you are a little brother, there is also a big sibling. If you are the big sibling, there is a little sibling. So this is what your notes would look like, right? Just like the beginning of your notes is those definitions. What's today's date? 28th. Are you trying to go in the future? I heard somebody say 29th. Don't skip today. Today's important. Uh, actually, I don't know. I would skip today. Dude, I have to teach five classes and give you guys a math test. I would skip today. If anyone figures out how to skip today, let me know. Sorry, are we? So this is exactly what I'm trying to train you guys to do. If you're not done writing this, if I do this, tell me stop. Wait, no, go back. So are we good to move on? Does anyone need more time? Need more time? Okay. Totally good. The next vocab word we're going to write down, and actually I'm going to go ahead and switch so that we can move on a little bit. So there's your definition still, but here's the next part of our notes. So if you're still writing inequality, Megan or anybody else, here's that definition. But then the next thing we're going to talk about is in an expression, right? Start with expressions. In an expression how do we talk about the pieces and parts? Guys, I have yet to figure out why coefficient is so hard for our brains to remember. Like, at anybody. Not just, like, 7th graders. I could go on the street and ask any random 40-year-old, what's a coefficient? They'd be like, uh, a car? But, like, a little, what? You know, like an efficient vehicle. Sorry. No, but like a coefficient. It's a complicated word for multiplier. It's the number that multiplies to the variable. I think at this point we know the variable is our unknown value until we solve for it. So any letter or actually any anything. Guys, this could be a picture of a bear and it would still be our variable because if we're using it to represent an unknown quantity, it's a variable. 
It could be a picture of a triangle. It could be B for bananas. It could be B for baboons. Who Like, we don't know. Yeah, it could be B for hours. Who knows? And then this is the other piece that I don't know why it's like, it's hard for our brains to remember this. But a constant, a constant is just a number. It does not change. If I pull out five, well, I, somebody steal my wallet? Can I just leave my phone somewhere? Ah. If I pull out five dollars, right, and everyone's like, ooh, five dollars. If I pull out five dollars and I stick it in my desk drawer, and I come back a month later and I pull it back out, is this still five dollars? Yeah. If I take a picture of you and a month later I take another picture of you, are you the same? Oh, you're changing, you're growing, you're learning. You're... So like constant is like five. The number five does not change. However, Bitcoin, if anyone knows what Bitcoin is, is not a constant value like a $5 bill. Bitcoin is changing value every single day. It's in the news right now. It was really high. It took a hit. I think it's coming back up a little bit. Um, so constant does not change. Right, just a number. I promise, last vocab word for today. Like terms, and I can show it to you up here. Like terms, it's up here in blue. You don't have to copy down everything in the picture. But like terms, and I'm gonna show my notes again in case anyone is still copying that. But like terms up there in blue or on my notes in red. You got two places to look at it, up there in blue or on my notes in red. Why do I have or none in parentheses there? What is the number if there is no variable? What do we call it? No, not one. Not zero. If it's a number with no variable, a number with no variable. It's a constant. This is what I was just saying, but it's so hard to remember and I don't know why. A number with no variable is a constant. So a constant with another constant, those are like terms. A K value with a K value, those are like terms. But, guys, this gets really complicated, and that's why I'm going to move my, uh, my doc cam and move my notes and show you guys where x and x squared and xy and x wing. No, wait, not an x wing. Star Wars thing, Star Wars thing, no? Okay. So, if you have a 4a and a 5, I can't put those together. I don't know what 4A is. There's this like guy with like, he's like four A's and I'm like, I don't want what, I don't even know what those are. Don't give those to me. So 4A cannot add with five, but 4A could add with 2A. And if they're good, if they're both good guys or both bad guys, they get along. But if one's a good guy, one's a bad guy, they're gonna fight. So they're both good guys and we get good guy 6A. Then we look and we have a five and a three. Wait, five and three make eight. But that's not eight. Ah, this is not three. It's negative three. You do not have to write this down. We're going to practice this in a minute. I just want to make sure you have the definition written down. So be careful. That's why I have this up here is to say take the negative with it. Make sure that you take the negative with it. Guys, unless you're still writing the definition for like terms, put your pencil down for a second and look up here. X, if we talk about like variables versus each other, X versus X squared, X is a distance, right? So X is like a line. X squared is literally the square of, they're different things completely. 
You can't say, how much space do you have total when you add the length of a road with the size of a park? Like, wait, what? The length of a road with the size of a park? Like, this is like, how big is a park? This is like, how far is it to get to school? They're two totally different things. So when we look at x squared and x, we cannot put them together. And a lot of people are like, okay, that's fine. They have different variables. I get that. But where you start to get even more confused is x. Well, this does, This has a variable of 1, right? It's, it's x and x. x, y might as well be z. x, y together is not x and it's not y. It's x, y. It's its own. It might as well be a purple octagon. Like, it's something different. So x, y does not go with x. It does not go with y. It does not go with x squared. It's its own thing. Like us Phoenixy people. We're our own thing. Right? So we're not Kilhorn. We're not McCord. We're our own thing. So does anyone have questions about like terms and why x cannot go with x squared, cannot go with x, y? On our examples. Now, I should not have written them like this, or I should not have put them on the screen like this. What I want your notes to look like, so if i got to cover this up, is write them out horizontally. So try to fit all four of these examples across your paper. So take a moment to write out those examples. Now the first one, I have all sorts of extra stuff written there compared to what they had up on the screen. Any variable that doesn't show a coefficient just has a coefficient of one, right? I do not say one Caroline, one Megan, one, like that would be weird if I was talking about who showed up to class. So I was like, hey, who'd you have in class? I was like, I had one Brady, I had one Layla, I had what? That would be awkward. I would just say I had Brady and Layla and right? Like you don't say one when you don't need to. So this one, I put it there, but we don't need to show it. That's why they don't show it. We don't need to. Now, Powers, same thing. If your power is just one, we don't show it. Because we say, I am me to the first power, right? I am this number, I am what I am. But as soon as you start multiplying, so remember, that's why we use powers. We use powers to show multiplication that repeats. Then we would need to show powers. So we don't need to write them, and that's why I stopped writing them after the first step, but I wanted to remind you when we think about is this like terms, they do have the same power. What's up? Uh, that's a K. Sorry, we'll get over there. My Ks are really bad. I'm sorry. Like my Ks just literally look bad. Um, it's because I learned cursive and then like don't use it. So negative 3Z minus, uh, wait, minus doesn't exist. Crazy Mr. Hudson back in the fall went off on this whole tangent about how subtraction is a lie and subtraction doesn't exist. And what it really is, is addition of a negative. So we can look at, do we have good guy, good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy, bad guy. Do we get along or do we fight? Right? That's the question we're asking. Do we get along or do we fight? We got bad guy, 3Z, bad guy, 1Z we get a total of bad guy for Z. 
any questions on the first one here. I do not need to put a first power, although I could if I wanted to. You could put a first power there and it would not make a difference. Okay, if you really wanted to, you could put a first power there. So in the second one, negative 4p and negative 6p. What do you get when you put those together? Yeah, I heard a couple people mumble it. Negative 10p. Right? We have two bad guys. They get along. P and P are both like terms, right? They have the same variable, same power. Again, if we wanted to put a power of one and a power of one, we could have. So my S's, do they get along or do they fight? Ah, they fight. Who wins? Ah, the bad guy wins. Careful, the negative is stronger because it's got a strength of four versus a strength of two. And it wins. Now my sloppy handwriting case. The trap door here is what? Who can tell me? Mason? The what? Uh, can, yeah. yeah, so I didn't think about that. There's two trap doors here, right? The K that is alone, quote unquote, is really 1K, right? We got it, or negative 1K. So we got to think about that. What happens with minus the negative? Turns into a plus, right? The opposite of subtraction or minus or take away a bad guy, right? Taking away a bad guy is a good thing. So minus a negative really turns into addition of a positive. So then they fight each other and we get 7K. Any questions about those four? Yeah. This one? So we compare this is positive. Thank you for asking, by the way. This is a positive to us. And now remember, anytime we see a plus sign, we can say that verbally by using the word and. So we have a good guy 2s and a bad guy 4s. So they fight each other. So if we think about it like the number line, we were at a positive 2, but then the negative 4 pulls us down by 4. We actually pass 0, and I got a number line over to the right of my smart board over there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, yeah, we think about, guys, vertical is a better way to think about number lines. So I don't know if you can see it from where you're sitting, but if we start at 2 and we go down by 4, we end up at the negative 2. So again, this is... Um, these are things that we're still catching you up on, right? Because you didn't get my teaching in the fall where I talk about good guys, bad guys fighting each other. That's new to you, right? So that's totally fine. It makes sense that you got a couple questions there. Um, keep coming to work with me as you need to. But we're almost out of time. We're going to jump to this one. So sorry, it's super pixely. But there's a trap door. Be careful. While you're writing this down and trying to solve it, I'm going to go ahead and bring wipes around. So you are putting these like terms together. You're not sitting there like a bump on a log waiting for someone to do it for you. If you want to see some highlighting to potentially help you, there is some highlighting. So if we were to zoom out and look at today as like, what do our notes look like? Right, your header is slightly different because I, I changed what I wanted the header to look like. But we got our header section with vocab. We got our expression section, coefficient, variable, constant. I might go back and, and highlight these Megan's up here doing an amazing job of highlighting stuff while she takes notes. You could go back after class and go highlight important words, right? Go back and pick those up. Like terms was pretty important. So you go highlight that. 
got our four examples of combining like terms. And then hopefully, what we get down here is 3n plus 2, because the trap door, hey, Nason, why did I just hear you say that's not what I got, and you're packing up while I'm still talking about the math that we're doing? Yeah, there's no response. Just say I'm sorry and get your binder back out. Minus the negative is plus the positive. Guys, I want you to know that as we get into quarter three, what you'll feel around here is like, man, that was really honest. Like we, us Phoenix teachers, are very honest with our students because that's efficient. So when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing or when you like make some choices that are questionable, especially now that we know you guys, we're gonna tell you. So like when somebody like calls you out individually or like sometimes students like to say like, oh, they, you know, I can't believe that teacher just threw shade, like whatever, like, yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. When you come into me and you're like, hey, I don't understand what I'm doing on Khan Academy. And I'm like, yeah, because you're farting around all the class. Like, and not that anyone did that today, but like, that's the type of stuff that, that's why I enjoy my job. Because I get to be honest with 12 year olds and like hopefully you're honest with me and I can help you grow. Whereas sometimes your parents are a bit too nice and like they might pick up your backpack for you or be like, oh, okay, whatever. He just, that's just, no, I expect better, right? Like sometimes your parents are too nice to you and they coddle you a bit much. You're going to start to feel quarter three, like we have high expectations for you. And mastering is like true mastery. Now. Like we're not going to let you slip by with like, oh, I'm almost there. Like, no, you got to master things. So, all right. That's all the time that we got for today. Um, please make sure you wipe down your desk. If you need anything else from me, if you need to see the notes page, it's about to go in my binder because um, my next class is not math seven. It's math eight. So there we go, guys. Have a wonderful day. Sup? Oh, stick in the bin, please. If you have your math test that you never turned in, remember, this is my turn-in bin. You guys are the bottom of it because you're afternoon math seven. So if I still need to see your math test, please put it there. I got too much to keep organized over here. If you did it twice or whatever is what it looks like, just turn them both back in. You can staple them together if you want or fold them together. There's one over there, I think. There should be one sitting right on top of the cubby thing. Now, if you're really curious where we're headed next, these are in Schoology, by the way. Like, your slides are in Schoology. Distributive property is where we need to go next. Hey, I found your thing. Found your thing? Oh. Oh, look. That's you. How would I have known that? Um, I can't really get to map right now because I need